Yo, what is up guys? Today, I've got another color grading tutorial for you guys. I recently went up to Bristol Cliffs, made a short cinematic of my journey up there. I was looking back at some of the footage and I was just like, man, this would be so cool to make a color grading tutorial on. It's got those nice, misty, foggy, dark, deep greens, but I just thought the footage looked too cool to not want to break down and color grade it with you guys. I recently did a similar color grading breakdown where we go over how you can grade blue hour footage and moody footage, which you can find on my channel or up here. And before we get started, I do want to note that I shoot an S-Log3, which is a flat profile on my Sony a7 IV with my Sigma 24 by 70 2.8. We're going to be doing this with no LUTs. We're just going to be working with the raw footage and starting from there. So if you've already watched my first color grading video, you might see some similar stuff in here, but I'm going to walk through it just in case for any of y'all that are out there and new. Let's make sure that we have our Lumetri scopes opened up here, which you can do by going to window and making sure that Lumetri color and scopes are selected. This just allows us to see the color ranges, especially when we're working with skin tones. And we have our section right here, which shows us the brightest parts of our image at 100 and the darkest at zero. You go below zero, you're clipping the blacks. If you go above 100, you're clipping the highlights. So I'm going to start by going into the curves and bringing down this point quite a bit because we have a lot of wiggle room here until we get to zero. I always set a point in the middle because I like to bring back the detail and then bring up the highlights which adds a little more contrast. Now I am going to white balance this footage to the car here. We can change the temperature of the footage if we want further down the color grading line. I'm going to add some saturation. Start bringing down that black point which we don't have a lot of room here so what I'm going to do is bring down the shadows which we should be able to bring down quite a bit. Now you can see that we're clipping here so I'm going to go back to the curves real quick and ease that bend out. Start adding some more brightness back to the image with the highlights and the whites. And I'm going to use the contrast to push the brightest and darkest parts of the image. Add some more contrast to it, which will in turn add some more detail. I'm going to bring down those shadows even more because we have quite a bit of room here. This black point is the point that I'm looking out for. So now we're going to go into the curves tab and I'm going to start desaturating these greens just a tad bit. You can use the eyedropper and select that range. I'm just going to eyeball it, which is what I normally do. And I'm going to start bringing down those greens to desaturate them quite a bit. Then I'm going to come into the hue versus hue. I want to make the greens look a little richer. We did just desaturate them, but I want to give them that rich desaturated look. And there's a lot of fog up in this section. If we move through the clip, there's a ton of fog up here. I'm going to try and darken it in the hue versus luma right here by bringing down this green point, which will add some contrast into that cloudy region up here. You got to be careful with this tool though. It's super powerful. I'm going to desaturate the blacks and the whites here, which will give us a perfect white and a perfect black. That way we have no color spillage. Now, if we go through it, it looks pretty solid. Now let's move into this clip, which is one of my favorites. We're going to do the same thing. Go through the curves here, start bringing that point down and leave a little bit of leeway in the dark parts of the image. Move these curves around to add some more contrast. I'm brightening the brighter parts of the image here, which affects these whites. If you see, if I move this, you can see it affects that. We want those whites in the background to be nice and bright. Now let's start bringing down that black point and stretching that as much as we can. I'm going to white balance to the white section here, add some saturation, start bringing down the shadows. We're starting to clip a little bit, so I'm going to ease this off. Bring up the highlights and start using that contrast again to spread out those colors. We are getting pretty close to clipping in the highlights here because of these bright parts in the image. So I'm going to bring the highlights down just a little bit. Back into our curves, we're going to make a general selection here. These greens are pretty yellow, so I'm going to make this point pretty far out. I'm going to start desaturating most of that color. And I don't want to mess up my skin tones too much, so I'm going to mark them off which you can see they're falling pretty darn close to that yellow point. I'm going to see if I can brighten up the red and orange part of my skin tones just a tad. And then I don't want any remaining purple or blue in this image, so I'm going to desaturate that completely. And then as we did in the previous clip, we're going to richen these greens up a little bit by moving this hue versus hue curve around to where we want it. And then I just want to darken the yellow parts of the image. So I'm going to use the hue versus luma, which again is a dangerous tool. So just be careful how much you push and pull again, desaturating the darkest and brightest parts of the image. Now I want to add a little bit of green into these shadows. I'm not even moving this a lot and it's adding a ton of color into this. 
I want to cool off the greens a little bit and add some blue into the highlights, not a whole lot. And then I'm going to add a little bit of green to the midtones as well. So now we've got a lot of contrasting colors here. And I might even go back into the curves and add a little bit more saturation back into those greens. They're pretty yellow. I'm just going to be careful with how much I bring back here. Now in the HSL secondary, what I want to do, if we go through the clip here, my skin tones are pretty pale. So I'm going to try and make a selection here with HSL secondary finding my skin tone the best I can. You can see that my skin tone in the rocky dirt section kind of are the same. So we're gonna have to mask that out. But for right now, I'm adding a little bit of blur and denoising it. And now I'm gonna bring up the midtones and warm them up towards the red. Maybe add just a little bit more warmth to them as well. So now if we go back through it, my skin tones look way better and a little bit warmer. And I'm not really liking the color of this dirt section here. So what I'm gonna do is add another Lumetri color to this clip. Now we're gonna come back into the curves. I'm gonna find that color here in the saturation. I'm gonna try and desaturate this a little bit. We do want it to have some of that yellow color to it, but not a whole lot. So I think I'm gonna leave it right about here. That looks pretty accurate to the original scene. And then for the finishing touch, we can add a nice vignette, which as I've shown before, we're gonna bring that feather all the way down just so we can really see it. And I like rounding out my vignettes quite a bit. I'm just gonna feather it, bring it in to as far as I want it. Now if I play through it, we've got an awesome like dark green moody looking clip. kind of doing the same steps throughout each clip but obviously the color grading is going to be a little bit different honestly i could probably just copy paste the color grading onto these other clips and work from there since this video is meant to show you guys how to color grade from scratch we're just going to keep doing that from scratch so we're going back into our curves bringing this down quite a bit and getting that nice bend in our curves going to white balance it again here in the white and then we're going to start adding some saturation back bringing that black point down quite a bit and then start darkening those shadows Bring the highlights back and using the contrast to push and pull the darkest and brightest parts of the image. This looks pretty good as far as our basic correction. Again, we're going to make a general selection here and start desaturating those greens. Now we're going to make these greens nice and rich. Also going to go back up here to hue versus saturation and just take out any blue or purple remaining in the saturation i do just want to bring down the darkness on the leaves just a little bit so making a general selection here and making it pretty wide same thing black and whites we're desaturating them here so we're going to add a tad bit of green here a little bit of blue into the highlights to cool off the warm tones that we have and then again in the mid tones just a slight pull towards gray bring the shadows down and the highlights up so we really pop here and as we've done before, I like to use a mask with the HSL secondary using the eyedropper, making the selection nice and wide so we really get everything here as far as the leaves. Blur it out and denoise it and then start adding some sharpening to those leaves. And for our finishing touch as always, we're adding that vignette and that really draws the viewer's attention to the center of the image. This clip is perhaps the most challenging because there's a lot of contrast in colors. We've got the sky, the trees, the greens, the dirt. They're just different colors, so we have to balance each out. So let's do that step by step here. Let's start bringing down the darkest parts of the image, which we have quite a bit to work with here. Bringing this point down quite a bit to add some contrast. Quick white balance, which you can see doesn't really make any large changes. Add some saturation back in. You do see here that we're getting pretty close to 100, so keep that in mind. Bringing the shadows back down, some contrast to push and pull those colors. So I'm gonna go into my curves. First, I'm gonna mark off my skin tones here. Then I'm gonna start desaturating the greens, which fall pretty far into the yellow here, pretty close to my skin tone. And then we're gonna richen them up using the hue versus hue. I wanna desaturate any of the blue or purple parts of the image. I want to darken the scene a little bit, so I'm just using a curve here in the hue versus luma, making it nice and wide, desaturating here. We're still pretty warm in the image, so we're going to bring some green shadows into it here, a little bit of blue into the highlights to cool down the fog and the highlights in the back, and then adding a little bit of green into the midtones, just a tad. I really want those highlights to pop, so I'm going to bring these up as far as I can. We're almost hitting 100 here. 
And so now we have a lot of this orange in my skin tones to work with. So we've got to work around that. So let's go ahead and grab another Lumetri color, drag it onto the clip. But this time I'm going to use HSL secondary instead of the curves. I'm going to select the color, move these accordingly so we really get that orange. I don't want to grab any of my skin tones here. So I'm going to try and keep that out of the image. I'm going to blur it out so any color grading changes we make aren't so intense. I'm going to desaturate them a little bit and you're gonna see a lot of that color leave. I'm gonna go in here and add a little bit of red into the midtones because as we desaturate, we're gonna lose a lot of that warmth, but I do still want some warmth in the ground. And so now with that being desaturated and a little bit warmer with the midtones, I feel like that looks a little bit better. My skin tones still look a little bit off, so we're gonna drag another Lumetri color and I wanna find a good point where I can really see them. I think right here is probably good. We're gonna use HSL secondary again and you might need to move through your clip and find those skin tones just so you can make a proper selection. I'm gonna warm them up in the midtones, add some more warmth to the shadows. And now I feel like that looks pretty solid. If I turn this on and off, you're gonna see that it adds some of that red warmth color to the ground as well. And that's because my skin tones are reflecting the color that's on the dirt. So it's a little bit hard to make that perfect selection. So sometimes what you need to do is create a mask. And I only want it happening to my skin tones. So I'm gonna mask myself out here and then feather that. I'm just gonna to come to the start of the clip actually and move that mask to where I need it, which is right here. And then we're gonna come all the way out to the end of the clip, make sure that our keyframe for the mask path is on. And then we're just gonna follow our body all the way out. We can watch it if we go through here. And like it's not tracking me perfectly and I could keyframe it a little bit more and make the mask exact. I just wanna show you guys for the simplicity of it, how you can go about isolating those HSL secondary color changes to a specific part of your image. I did want to show you guys here, if we go back to this clip, I'm just going to copy paste the color grading changes I did to this clip. You can see that that looks pretty solid. Like I probably don't even need to do a lot of changes, but I'm just going to go into the Lumetri scopes and see if we can push and pull anything else. Like it looks like we can bring down the black point, maybe just a tad more and the shadows if we really want to darken this. But I honestly feel like I don't really need to touch the image. It looks pretty solid. And again, this really only works because I'm shooting in a similar environment. Like I, I took these clips not too far away from each other. So the lighting and the colors of everything are just the same. So that's why you can kind of copy paste that color grade to your other clips. So thanks as always for watching guys. I hope this video helped you get some ideas on how you can color grade your footage and get those deep rich greens. I did pull a lot of these clips from a recent video I did where I hiked Bristol Cliffs. If you guys want to go check that out, it's on my channel. Let me know if you guys have any questions or suggestions about color grading. How do you guys go about doing it? You guys just simply watching this video and leaving a comment really helps my videos go a long way. And I would love to continue making these color grading tutorials just so you guys can see how I go about doing it. I'm not a professional color grader. This is just how I go about doing it. With that being said, I'm out of here. Peace.